What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from high on Android, dopetechdaily.com and today I've got some continuing coverage of the new Samsung phones. I've got the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Now I don't want to spend too much time on the unboxing. I just want to go quickly through what comes in the box. You already saw me do the AT&T unboxing uh, of the Edge Plus. So the Edge Plus and the Note 5 are kind of similar. So I'm trying to combine some of the coverage. The only thing that's different of course here is I have the Verizon model. So I do want to show you what's inside the box. You may have seen it from some other channels. Um, but we'll quickly take a look. Then I want to compare the Edge Plus and the Note 5 and then also do a couple speed tests. So I want to show you guys sort of the difference in speed between the AT&T and Verizon model, see if there is any real difference. And then also show you a few things that I've noticed with RAM management on the Note 5 and the Edge Plus. So we're just going to do a few comparisons. Uh, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to preview some of the upcoming accessories I have just so you guys know uh, what to look forward to. I've got a lot of great cases coming up for the Note 5 and the Edge Plus. A couple of them came today, so I'll show you a sneak peek of that. Now you see here, I've got two of the Verizon models. Um, I don't need one of each color, so uh, I didn't get two for myself. One of these is going to my fiance. She really wanted the Note 5 as well. So I have the black Sapphire model as well as the white model. And you can see here that I actually have been using my Note 5. I unboxed mine and have been using it for a while. You see here the Note 5 in white. This is the one I'm keeping. I have had black sapphire for my Edge, my S6 Edge, and my regular Galaxy S6, and I already have gold for my Edge Plus, so I decided to switch it up a little bit and go with the white model. So I'm going to do the white model. My fiance is going to get the um, black sapphire. So since I've already unboxed mine, I'm going to sit it to the side. I'm going to use it for uh, a couple tests in a bit, but I want to show you guys what comes inside the box. Now, unfortunately, you can see here a little bit of um, a little bit of the sticker here. I bought it at Best Buy and for whatever reason they always insist on taking my phone out of the box. Kind of pisses me off to be honest with you but uh, they always do it when I'm not looking and they're setting up the phone and they want to test to make sure the reception works which I think is a bunch of BS but um, whatever. So if you open it up you get some plastic on there. Um, again Best Buy already took the plastic off so it's not on this phone. And then one thing you notice, a lot of other people who've reviewed and unboxed the Note 5 for Verizon, you get this really nasty QR sticker. And if you try to peel it off, it leaves a really nasty residue, which takes forever to actually get off of the phone. So I already warned my fiance about that. I'll let her deal with peeling it off. So let me just put that to the side for a second. And then what else you get? Some BS from Verizon. Paperwork, get to know your phone. They tell you, you know, hey, we're not going to give you Samsung Pay. They don't actually put it in here, but they should, because unlike the AT&T model, which you guys saw in the unboxing I did, there was a pamphlet in there on Samsung Pay. There's not one in here, because Verizon's model is not going to support Samsung Pay as of now. They may change that position, but right now, they have not come out saying that it's supported. It's currently not supported yet. So that could change between now and the end of September, but we'll see. Uh, of course, you get a SIM tool. So get a SIM tool right there. It's taped to the bottom of the box. Leave that for my fiance. You get uh, your charging brick, which of course is going to enable the fast charge. You get your high gauge cable, the fast charge. And of course, with the Note 5, you also get, as usual, I've never had to use these, but these are replacement tips for the S Pen. So these are the replacement tips that in case you um, your S Pen gets dull, I guess, you can use these to replace that. So that's what's inside there. And of course, as you can see, that's all that's in the box. Namely, you'll notice that what's missing compared to my S6 Edge Plus unboxing is there's no headphones. So Verizon does not give you any headphones in the packaging. So if you're buying the Verizon model, it is the cheapest of all the places that you can get a Note 5, but you're also gonna get shorted a quality pair of headphones. So I don't need my Samsung headphones. So I'm actually going to include the ones I got with the Edge Plus for my fiance. So I will do that. But um, if you're buying it, don't expect to get the headphones. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in the box. Again, I'm going to send this off to her um, so she can activate it and enjoy her new Note 5. Just wanted to show you guys what's inside the box. So now, now that we've done that, we've seen the inside the Verizon box. Yes, Verizon has a huge logo on there. The QR sticker is annoying. Um, a few other comments. There's a ton of bloatware installed, including a bunch of games. I already deleted them from my Note 5, but you can expect to lose about a gigabyte of space. So you can 
uninstall those, but you can expect to lose about a gigabyte of space right out of the gate. So there's actually a lot of cons to the Verizon model. No Samsung Pay as of now, more bloatware than the AT&T model, and you don't get any headphones. So three strikes against you, Verizon, so far. All right, so let's put that to the side. Um, now let's go ahead and just take a look here at my phone. I wanna show you guys some comparisons to last year's Note 4 really quick, uh, just so you can get an idea. You may have seen this before. This is the Note 4 from last year. If you put these side by side, you can see the new Note has this new form factor. In particular, it is a little bit thinner, as you can see there, and it has these curves on the back, which make it easier to hold. And then around front, you no longer have the chamfered edges, which I actually like because I use cases, and these chamfered edges tend to get scratched a little bit, which annoyed me. Uh, the phone is substantially, I think, easier to hold with the curve back. It doesn't feel as sharp in the hand. Um, it's, I guess, a little bit heavier, actually, than last, mo last year's model. At least it feels that way in the hand. But it definitely feels more premium. It feels nicer. Of course, as you know, there's no removable back on the new model. So you can't peel off the back, which means no removable battery. Um, the S Pen now looks a lot cleaner, in my opinion. Now in the new S Pen, you get that in focus. This guy pops right out and you can eject your S Pen. Whereas last year on the Verizon Note 4 or all the Note 4 models, you need to pry this out with your finger, which can be a little bit annoying. Uh, so if you have this stuck in some really deep cases, it could be really hard to get out. This should make it a little bit easier. The other thing, of course, that's changed, which I really do like, is the speaker was on the back last year. Now we've got the speaker on the bottom. Still not as good as having front-facing speakers, but of course, that is an improvement over last year's Note 4. So let me snap that on my battery cover on fully. There we go. So the Note 4, I think, was a thicker device and definitely feels less premium. But of course, you also have your SD slot and you have a removable battery. Um, I have the Note Edge as well, but there's really no main difference. This is the AT&T model, except you don't have the Edge on the new one. Otherwise, it's not really, it's the same differences from the Note 4 to the Note 5. That's the same thing that's going to go from the Note Edge to the Note 5. The only difference being, of course, the Edge on one side. So now let's look at the comparison for this year, the two big phones that Samsung released, which is the Edge Plus and the Note 5. So here, if you take a look, I've got my Edge Plus from AT&T. Here's my Verizon Note 5. You can see that the Edge Plus, actually, it's a little bit taller, I guess, because you have the, the edges on either side, or maybe it just appears that way. Yeah, it's not actually really taller, so you put them side by side, the same height. Of course, the main difference is, on the Edge Plus, you have the curved edges on the front. On the Note 5, you have the curved edges on the back. I actually like the curved edges on the back a little bit better, mainly because it serves for grip but if you use a case, that's not really gonna make a huge difference. Now, one thing I've noticed is the battery life on my AT&T Edge Plus has been better than the one on the Verizon Note 5. I don't know if that's just an artifact of the carrier, of course, but I have good LTE signal everywhere in my service area. But I just wanted to show you guys really quick. These are pretty similar in speed, so if you launch some apps here, I'll launch my Gmail, for instance. You see there, I've been using the Note 5 a little quicker. Let's go ahead and clear the memory of both of them actually, just to be fair. So if we clear the memory of both and then we launch Gmail, pretty similar in speed. Uh, let's launch Hangouts and pretty dang, pretty dang similar actually for both of them. Let's launch Chrome, which usually takes a while to load and they're pretty similar. You can see the Edge Plus appears to be a little bit faster, which is something that I've noticed, um, but maybe it's only by a couple uh, milliseconds. It's only because they're side by side that we can notice the difference. So, so far the Edge Plus has had a little better battery life and it's a little bit faster opening apps, sort of cold. Um, the other thing I've noticed really quickly that I wanted to mention, which will go in my full review for sure, but since I'm doing this video, I might as well mention it now. Both of these phones have a problem. I'll just demonstrate it with one of them because I've noticed it on both. Both of these phones have a problem where if you open up multiple apps in a row, the Samsung TouchWiz, um, the way they're killing the RAM to make killing apps to make room for um, the newer apps, they're killing 
very aggressively. So basically if you open up five or six apps in a row and then you go back to the original app, it's going to take a long time to reload the original app. It's reloading the entire app. So if we take a look, let's go to Hangouts, let's go to Gmail, let's go to Chrome, uh, let's go to Instagram, let's go to Camera, let's go to YouTube Studio, let that load for a second, let's go to Slack, let's go to Stat Counter, which I use for tracking views on the site, and then let's go back to Hangouts. And you notice it reloads Hangouts. You can see that because it says at the bottom signed in. So every time Hangouts reloads, it tells you that you're signed in with your email address. So you can see it reloads Hangouts, and that's not, it's not super slow, but it's kind of a big deal because phones like the Nexus 6 and other phones that are running closer to stock builds don't do this. And the fact that this has four gigabytes of RAM, it's a little bit unacceptable. So this aggressive, um, this aggressive task killing by Samsung is probably a function to free up RAM for TouchWiz. So I believe Android Police or Fandroid did a video on this and I was able to reproduce it, so I wanted to mention that. All right, so I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'll have more comparisons coming up with the Note 5 and the S6 Edge Plus to some other phones in my lineup. I already compared this to the iPhone 6 Plus and some other phones. I'll compare these, uh, both phones, to some of the other flagships I have in the full review. Probably gonna combine the full review on these phones because they're so similar. And I just wanna mention before I get out of here, I have a few cases that came in for both phones. So look for the UAG case for the Note 5 and the Edge Plus coming up on the channel. Probably have a chance to do a giveaway on these guys. UAG was nice enough to send me out a review unit. So I'll probably have a giveaway on that. I love this red color, it looks fantastic. And then the other cases I've got that came in were the Varus High Pro Shield for the Galaxy Note 5. Also gonna get some Varus cases in for the Edge Plus and we'll probably do a giveaway on those. So look out for that. And then I've also got the Spigen kickstand case here in gold. This is for the Edge Plus, but I'll also have a similar case for the Note 5 coming up. All right guys, thanks for checking out the video. This was a quick unboxing of the Note 5 comparison and some RAM tests. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Give me a thumbs up on the video and you can find my social media links, Twitter and Google Plus below to give me a follow. I appreciate you guys watching the video. I will see you guys in the next one.